Hi everyone, I'm Gina from China. Or so I thought. Please like and subscribe. I was only a newborn when my adoptive dad found me outside a Shaolin temple in China one night. He was a martial arts teacher and the owner of the Shaolin temple. He tried to find out who my parents were, but when nothing turned up, he decided to take me in and raise me like his own daughter. I knew nothing of my real family. But the only clue I had was a very unique-looking necklace they'd left with me. Growing up, I was weaker than the other kids, but Dad was always there to look after me and trained me hard so I'd become stronger. But the kids at the temple were the worst, and they always made fun of me. Their nasty comments would make me really upset. What happened, Gina? What's wrong? Everyone says you're not my father, and I should go back to where I came from, Dad. Oh, honey, you should not let their words get to your heart. You are my daughter, and you're super strong. But, but I'm so small. No, you're not. Look at that ant. It may seem small, but see how she's lifting a sugar cube. The same way, your strength should come from your mind and not your body alone. Dad's words always encouraged me, and I started focusing on myself. By the time I turned eight, I had a sudden growth spurt, and suddenly I was taller than most kids my age. With time, even my martial arts skills improved a lot, and I started winning many competitions. But the kids at the temple would feel jealous and try to mess with me all the time. This went on until I was 17, and then one day, something weird happened. I was in the market when I crashed into someone, and all my groceries fell to the floor. Hey, watch where you're going and say sorry. But he just ran off into the alley, and I went after him and pinned him down. Oh God, stop! Are you gonna kill me? What were you trying to do, huh? He told me his name was Drake, and he was a super famous singer from the U.S. And now he was running away from some crazy fans who were chasing him. I left my hotel in disguise to take a walk around the city, but my fans somehow recognized me. I'm totally lost. Please help me get back. I decided to help him, but he didn't even know the name of his hotel. What? But you have your phone, right? Call someone. I left it at the hotel. Gosh, he was such a handful. Take me with you. What? I can't do that. No outsiders were allowed inside the temple, but this guy kept begging me, and I decided to sneak him in. You have to stay all quiet in here, okay? Ugh. I sneaked in my share of the food, and he ate like he was starving for days, and didn't leave any for me. That's it. You're gonna have to leave tomorrow morning, or you're saying all this because you have no idea how popular I am. Otherwise, you'd have never wanted to let me go, baby girl. Huh? Who did he think he was? Suddenly, he grabbed my phone and started showing me all these pictures of himself online. And that's when I noticed something very strange. A woman in one of those photos was wearing the exact same necklace as mine, and she looked so much like me. Who is she? Um, you want to know her and not me? Ah, fine. She's a family friend, but why? Could I really have some connection with this lady? But what were the chances? The next day, I woke up to loud noises in the temple and saw Drake was being taken by his security people. Turns out, one of the girls from the temple knew him and reported it to his managers. I didn't even get to say goodbye. But ever since that day, I kept wondering about who my real parents were and why they left me. And my dad could tell soon that something was bothering me. Gina, it seems like you're lost, my dear. What's the matter? I told Dad everything that was going on in my mind, and he had the best advice. If it bothers you so much, you should go out there and seek the truth for yourself, my love. But Dad, how can I leave you and go all by myself? I raised you to be strong and independent. I know you're going to be just fine. Oh, Dad. A few weeks later, when I reached the U.S., I tracked down Jake's place and went over. But his security people wouldn't let me in. But I know him well. Oh yeah. All the crazy fangirls know him well and try to break in all the time. You see that line over there? That's why we're hiring personal bodyguards for him. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm here to to be his bodyguard. <laughs> nice try, but it's male bodyguards only. Now off you go, little girl. I couldn't give up like that. Only Drake could lead me to that woman, and I had to find a way to get to him. So. I bought some makeup and wigs from a nearby shop and disguised myself as a guy. Later, when I went to audition for the job, everyone was fascinated by my smooth martial arts skills, and they hired me in an instant. They even gave me a room to stay at Drake's mansion. On my very first day, Drake's manager told me that he was running late for a photo shoot and asked me to go wake him up. But when I reached his room, 
I saw a girl trying to click pictures of him while he was asleep. You, get away from him. I pulled the sheets from under their butts and they both fell to the floor. What? Are you nuts? You broke my butt. Before she could record more, I took her phone and threw it out the window and she jumped onto me. You jerk, that was my brand new iPhone. Seconds later, Drake separated us and told me that she was his girlfriend. Then why was she clicking your pictures like that? Turns out, Drake's girlfriend, Blythe, was a social media star, and all she did was post pictures with Drake for popularity. She stuck to him like chewing gum and wouldn't give me any time to be alone with him. Even when we'd step out, she'd join us and give me death stares. Why do you keep following me all the time? Ma'am, I'm Drake Sir's bodyguard, and it's my job to protect him. That's enough, Blythe. He's just doing his job, so cut it. But she wouldn't miss a chance to mess with me. There was a fan signing event for Drake soon, and Blythe was live streaming when she tried to make me fall and humiliate me in front of Drake and the crowd. But I moved aside just in time, and she ended up bumping into one of the fans and falling face flat. Ugh, are you blind, moron? Can't you see? When the fans saw her rude behavior, they got real mad, and Blythe ran out of there to save her butt. But some of the anti-fans started throwing rotten eggs and tomatoes at Drake. I ran towards him and shielded him from all the nasty stuff and took him inside safely. When all the chaos was over, I realized I smelled gross, and I immediately ran to the washroom. But the moment I started washing my clothes, I heard a loud scream and Blythe came running towards me. You moron, I knew it. You're a pervert and you've been following me this whole time. What, have you lost your mind? Why would I do that? It's then when I realized I was in the girl's washroom and Blythe pulled me out in front of everyone. I want you to fire this guy immediately, Drake. He followed me into the washroom. I swear, it was a mistake. I was the one who asked him to go and look for you. What? He took my side in front of all those people over his girlfriend, and I had no idea why. So later that night, when I saw him sitting in the garden, I went to talk to him. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, all thanks to you, man. You were the one who came to save me even when Blythe ran away. Eh, that's just my job. He then signaled me to sit down, and I did as he asked. Why did you take my side today? Because I knew Blythe was lying. I've known her ever since we were kids, and I know when she doesn't like anyone, she makes a huge fuss about it. But still, she's your girlfriend. Sometimes, I wish she wasn't. I always saw her as a friend, but one day, she asked me out. I said no, but my mom and Blythe's mom are best friends, and mom said I couldn't break Blythe's heart. But you should have told your mom you didn't love Blythe. I did, but she didn't listen. Like she never listens to me about wanting to quit music for a while. But I thought you loved creating music. I do love music, but I just want to do it at my own pace. But my mom keeps pushing me into advertisements and other projects all the time. Then you should tell her to stop. If you don't like something, you don't have to do it, Drake. You're right, man. I'm just sick of everyone trying to use me for their own benefit. I can't even talk to any of them about this, but I'm so glad I found a friend like you, whom I can trust. Those words pierced my heart. I was staying by his side and lying to him for my own benefit too. <gasps> just then, I spotted a mouse running on the ground towards me, and I just squealed loudly and jumped onto Drake's lap. Oh my god, what's wrong? Uh, I don't know why I thought something was about to attack you, and I, I was just protecting you with my body, uh, like a human shield. Just my training, you know? Okay, and is the girly scream part of the training too? <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like a war cry to scare the enemy. It's gotta be shrill. <laughs> Makes sense. You wanna get off my lap now, princess? I jumped off his lap, muttering something and excused myself quickly. I'd acted like such a moron and almost given myself away. I just couldn't tell him who I was now. He trusted me and would feel so betrayed. So, I started keeping an eye on all the women around him by myself, hoping I'd find the woman from the picture soon. And Drake learned to take a stand for himself with his mom and instead started doing things that he loved, like playing soccer. He also started ditching Blythe more often and we'd sneak out to go on motorbike rides and eat the greasiest burgers across town. Come on, you can't finish a burger? Be a man. I'll finish it, dude. Not all of us inhale our food like you. Wait, you got mustard on your face. And without thinking, I leaned forward and wiped the mustard close to his mouth with my thumb. He just looked at me quietly, and I swear I had butterflies in my stomach. Luckily, just then, his phone started ringing and the moment passed. 
I was pretty sure he thought I was his gay bodyguard now. A few days later, Blythe followed us to the match and offered to take everyone out for drinks. I quickly sneaked into the shower room first so no one would know my real identity. But just as I was done taking off my makeup and wig, I turned around and saw Drake standing there and I let out a loud scream. Suddenly, I could hear some footsteps approaching and Drake pulled me into one of the shower stalls. What the? Stay quiet or someone's gonna see you. He was so close to me and my heart was racing. But seeing how Drake didn't look shocked one bit, I could tell he already knew who I was. How long have you known? Almost since the start. What do you think I am, an idiot? Why didn't you say something then? I wanted to see what you were really up to, or how long you'd keep up the act. It's been fun, liar. Drake, I'm sorry. I never wanted to lie to you. I was just trying to find the woman with the same necklace as mine. Huh? What necklace? I told him everything, and when I noticed that the person outside had left, I stepped out to show him the necklace. But I was shocked to see that all the stuff I'd taken off while removing my makeup was gone, along with my necklace. I looked for it everywhere, but I couldn't find it. Calm down, Gina. It must be here somewhere. And I... I know who the woman in that picture was. But before he could tell me, Blythe barged in with the cops who wanted to arrest me for fraud. Fraud? That's a lie. Oh, come on. You pretended to be a guy and stole expensive things, including my mom's necklace. I've called her. She'll be here any minute, officers, and you can ask her. But arrest that fraud first. Your mom's necklace? What are you talking about? I didn't steal it. It's mine. Gina's right. She didn't steal anything and she didn't lie to anyone. I knew who she was all along. And Blythe, I'm breaking up with you. Blythe looked ready to explode. But just then, Blythe's mom entered and took the necklace from her hand. Where did you get this from? It's... it's mine. She turned to me and that's when I saw she was the same lady from the picture. And she was wearing the same necklace. I told her everything about myself, and at first she looked stunned, but then she broke into tears. Oh, honey, my daughter, I can't believe it's you. You're alive. She then told me how she got pregnant before marriage, but her super rich family was against her giving birth here and ruining their reputation, so she fled to China. Soon after I gave birth to you, my parents found me, and the doctors told me you had passed away because you were too weak. But now I know, they lied to me. So, so you didn't abandon me? Ugh, stop with your act. She's a liar, Mom. And this necklace must be a fake. Blythe, I know it's a lot to take in, but it's not a lie. She, she's indeed your sister. I can tell just by looking at her. Ugh. Blythe stormed out of there in anger and the lady turned towards me. I'm so sorry that you had to live like this for all these years, but I'm so glad that you found your way to me. Please. Give me a chance to make up for all these years. I can't do that. What? All my life? I wanted to know the truth about who I was, and now that I've discovered it, my heart is at peace. But this isn't where I belong. I have a life and a loving dad back in China, but I promise I'll visit often and get to know you more. Oh dear. Does this mean I'm losing my favorite bodyguard? Pretty much. But you've got a friend for life. Just a friend? No chance you'd say yes if I asked you out? have to think about it.